Today, you are here to have a LifeSafer ignition interlock installed into a vehicle. Over the past 10 years, more people have chosen LifeSafer over any other interlock device available. And for good reasons, like ease of use, proven reliability, and a reputation for being supported by a dependable and knowledgeable service network. Like the many tens of thousands before you, most people who have the device installed are compelled to do so by a court or state authority as a condition of probation or as a restriction to their driver's license. Your service provider is well aware that you may feel apprehensive or even angry that the interlock is just part of the continuing nightmare of getting caught. Your provider also knows there are a few who are bound and determined to beat the machine and continue engaging in high risk and dangerous behavior behind the wheel. Regardless of what you are feeling, you need to be assured of the following. Your provider is not here to make judgments about you or your circumstances. Your participation in the program will be held in the strictest confidence. Your provider will do everything within reason to help support and assist you as their customer in successfully completing the program. While the device is being installed, you should expect to be fully instructed and trained on the proper use and operation of the device, to have all your questions answered and concerns addressed in a respectful and confidential manner, to have full disclosure of all program fees and charges, to receive information on how to obtain service after you leave. What does the device look like? The device consists of several components. A sampling headset that fits in the palm of your hand and resembles a cell phone. Sanitary, replaceable mouthpieces that are inserted in the top of the handset. A coiled cable that connects the handset to a relay module that is mounted underneath the dash or in the engine compartment. How does it work? The device draws a small portion of your breath sample into a fuel cell sensor. Any alcohol present chemically reacts with the sensor producing water and electricity, which is precisely measured and translated into an equivalent blood alcohol concentration, or BAC. If the result of your test is below the lockout point, an encrypted signal is sent to the relay to close, which will allow your vehicle to be started. If the test result is too high, then the vehicle's ignition system will remain locked. Where is it installed? The sampling headset is temporarily mounted with Velcro or a phone clip to the vehicle's dash with an easy reach of the driver. There is no drilling or permanent connection made into the exposed area of the vehicle dash or operator compartment. After the device is removed, the vehicle's wiring connections are returned to normal. Will it affect the operation of my vehicle? A properly installed device under ordinary use will not drain or damage your battery or the electrical system and its components, nor interfere with the normal operation of your vehicle in any way. When the vehicle is not running, the device draws less current than the clock in your car. Prior to the installation, a qualified technician will inspect both the mechanical and electrical systems of your vehicle to ensure the vehicle, at that time, is capable of supporting the proper function of the interlock device. Once installed, the device regularly monitors and records battery voltage and cranking power. The power light will flash if the device detects the car's battery voltage is low, warning you that your vehicle's electrical system may need repair or your battery needs to be replaced. At no time can the device shut the vehicle off. It will only prevent it from starting. Once again, at, at no, no time, time will, will the, the device, device shut, shut the, the vehicle, vehicle off. off. Unit Power Up When you enter the vehicle, place your key into the ignition and turn the key to on. The wait light will glow momentarily, indicating the device is preparing to accept a breath test. When the device is ready to accept the test, the green blow light will glow and flash. You will also hear two high-pitched beeps. This will alert you that it is time to take the breath test. If you do not take the test within one minute, the blow light will go out and you will have to repeat the power-up process. Passing a test. To successfully pass a test, you must blow long enough with sufficient pressure while generating a tone. Relax and take a deep breath. Now blow steadily 
while making a tone into the mouthpiece for approximately five to seven seconds. With practice, passing a test will become second nature to you and will no longer be uncomfortable or annoying to do, much like the extra step of buckling your seatbelt. Let's take that test again. Make sure you have a clean and dry mouthpiece in the device. Hold the device away from you, take a deep breath, and then put the mouthpiece inside your lips. As you are blowing and making a tone, remember, steady and solid, never too hard or too soft. The device will omit its own tone, indicating you are testing properly. Continue to make your tone and blow until the device tone stops and the unit beeps. When you pass a test, the green pass light will glow and a triple tone will sound, indicating a successful test. The green run light will also begin to flash, indicating you may now start the vehicle. When the device detects your vehicle is running, the green run light will stop flashing and glow a solid green. Abort test. If you haven't blown properly or hummed correctly, the device will abort the test and the red abort light will glow. You will also hear a unique tone upon aborting the breath test. Aborting does not mean you failed the test. It means you didn't deliver it properly. After an abort, the yellow wait light will turn on while the device is resetting itself. Normally, this takes about 45 seconds before testing again. If your test aborts, Change your mouthpiece if it's not clean and dry. The mouthpiece is designed to keep moisture and saliva from going into the device, which can cause an abort. Be especially diligent in cold weather, as warm breath blown into a cold mouthpiece causes moisture condensation. Your service provider should provide you with an ample supply of extra mouthpieces. Stall Protect. Once the vehicle is started, if you shut the vehicle off or the engine stalls, the device will allow you several minutes to recrank or restart the vehicle without having to take and pass a test. While in stall protect, the green run light will flash, just like it did for the startup period after passing the test. Running retest. You will be required to retest while operating the vehicle to deter any drinking and driving. Typically, your first retest will be shortly after the vehicle is started and at random intervals thereafter. When the device wants you to retest, the green blow light will begin flashing and two high-pitched beeps will sound. After a short period of time, the device will activate a louder request for you to pass a test. You will typically have five to six minutes to pass the retest or shut the vehicle off before further sanctions are imposed. Once again, the device cannot and will not shut your vehicle off. Caution. Always exercise safety first. The device is designed to allow you to continue driving and safely retest without taking your eyes off the road and provides plenty of time to complete the test. However, if you are uncomfortable, it is recommended that you pull off the road and come to a complete stop before taking the retest. If you fail to pass the retest or shut the vehicle off in the time allotted, your vehicle's horn or additional alarm may sound. A violation will also be recorded, and the service and lockout light may begin to flash, indicating the device has recorded one too many violations. To avoid this unpleasant and costly experience, simply pass your test when it is requested. Hundreds of thousands of retests are passed safely and with ease each and every day. Failed Test The devices are typically set to fail at well below the legal limit and in many cases, set to fail with the presence of any measurable amount of alcohol, often as low as 0.020%. Some participants on the interlock program are subject to zero tolerance and must abstain completely from the consumption of alcoholic beverages at any time. Warning, if you are one of those participants, you are strongly advised to take all necessary precautions prior to testing to avoid a fail reading as any failed test result is automatically reported. Morning after and mouth alcohol failed tests. Participants often trip up by blowing a low level fail the morning after. The best way to avoid them is not to drink any alcoholic beverages. It can take up to two hours for the body to completely eliminate the alcohol from just one beer. And depending on your size and weight, one beer will produce 0.015% to 0.030% BAC. 
Do the math. A few beers the night before could easily result in a low-level fail test in the morning. Avoid eating, drinking, or using mouthwash or medicines that contain alcohol immediately prior to testing. Fruit-based drinks and ripening fruit ferment and produce trace amounts of alcohol. Even activated yeast in hot pizza dough or baked goods produces alcohol. It only takes molecules of alcohol in the mouth to set off the device. Alcohol evaporates very quickly. If you ever get a fail from mouth alcohol, rinse your mouth out with water. Take a few deep breaths of fresh air and retest after waiting a few minutes. If you are supposed to be abstaining from the use of alcohol, it is advisable to blow a clean pass test to provide supportive evidence that you are not consuming alcoholic beverages at the time. While it may be difficult to completely avoid eating or drinking while operating your vehicle, at minimum, carry a small bottle of water with you, take a drink, swish it around your mouth, and swallow before retesting. Temporary Lockout Your device will go into lockout after one or more failed tests. The lockout light will turn on and glow red, and the device will not accept another test for a predetermined time period. The lockout time periods are determined by state regulation or court order and may be as little as 5 minutes or as long as 24 hours. After the time period expires, the lockout light will turn off and you may test again. Scheduled Program Checks Periodically, you will be required to have the device's recorded data downloaded, reviewed, and reported by the service provider to one or more authorities. The device, vehicle, and wiring may be inspected for signs of tampering, and the calibration of the device's accuracy will be checked. The device will remind you of your scheduled service by turning on and flashing the red service light. Once you are past due for service, both the lockout and service lights will flash, and the device will play a little tune, reminding you you are past due for service. The number of times the lights flash in sequence indicates the number of days left before the device goes into permanent lockout. Permanent lockout. If you do not have the device's data downloaded and reset by the service provider, the device will go into permanent lockout and the device will not ask for a test, nor allow the vehicle to be started. In addition, failure to have scheduled service will be reported by the service provider to the appropriate authorities. Violations. The device monitors all of your activities when using the vehicle. It records the results of every test or attempted test when the vehicle is started and when it is stopped. It records attempts to physically tamper with the device or circumvent having to pass a test or retest or disconnect the device. It thwarts non-human air samples or attempts to filter alcohol out of the breath or mask the amount of alcohol blown into the device. The device records such activities as violations. Very simply, if you try to cheat, you will be detected, identified, and reported. Early Recall If one or more of allowable violations are recorded in the device's memory chip, the service and lockout lights will turn on and flash, indicating that you must return early to the service center to have the data downloaded, interpreted, and reported. Circumvention or tampering with the device may result in more than loss of driving privileges. In many states, it is a punishable criminal offense, mandating fines and incarceration. The device also monitors its own functionality in accordance with fail-safe technical requirements. Any type of malfunction or failure that could affect the reliability or accuracy of the device's test results Recorded data or affect the normal operation of the vehicle or device must be detected and once recorded, put the device into early recall for inspection, service, or repair. Again, the service and lockout lights will turn on and flash, indicating that you must return to the service center. If the device is able to internally correct itself, the device will go out of early recall and resume normal operations. If the device stays in early recall, it will continue to function normally and the vehicle can be operated. Cold weather starts and instant ready for test. During extreme cold weather, any interlock device may take up to three minutes to warm up 
and be ready for testing. Your service provider can program three 20-minute periods in 24 hours when the device will automatically power up and be ready for a test when you hop in the vehicle. Computer-aided hum and blow training. Let's go back to the beginning and practice proper hum and blowing techniques. Your service provider has available a software program that characterizes and evaluates your technique. It measures and provides feedback to make sure that you are blowing long enough, not blowing too soft or too hard, humming within the preferred mid-frequency range, humming loud enough, humming in a stable rather than choppy fashion. The hum tone is most easily accomplished by saying the word as you blow. In conclusion, your service provider wants to help you avoid problems using the device and to successfully complete the interlock program by providing proper training and ongoing support. However, it takes your active attention to understand how the device works, what to avoid doing, and for you to live by the do's and don'ts of the interlock program. If you don't, the device will become an intrusion into your life. It will not let you drive where you want to or when you want to and may land you in an unpleasant outcome with an oversight authority. So good luck, don't drink and drive, and make your life safer. <laughs>